Hi, everybody. Welcome to our uh, Fridays with Friends. I'm here with Katiana Mazard, uh, Senior Citizens Law Project Director here at Coast to Coast, and uh, Mark Adler, Executive Director of Meals on Wheels South Florida, is joining us today. Uh, this is part of our weekly series of Fridays with Friends. We meet with community members and we talk about important resources uh, that, that are available to our community. So uh, follow us on Facebook for the next one. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to Katiana and uh, Mark, and they're going to talk about some great resources. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this afternoon. We have our good friend and neighbor, Mark Adler from Meals on Wheels, joining us this afternoon. Hello, Mark. How are you? Katiana. Good, good. Okay, um, this is a short segment today, so it's just 15 minutes long, so we're just going to get right to it. Um, since COVID-19 has hit um, North America, millions of Americans have lost their jobs and are seeking assistance more than ever, including food, food assistance. Um, so we wanted to talk to Mark to find out, um, is he seeing more people seeking um, assistance with Meals on Wheels, from Meals on Wheels, and what other services are available in the community? Um, Mark, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your organization for those who's not familiar with it? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, most people have heard of Meals on Wheels, <clears throat> and we're probably most well known for our home delivered meals for homebound seniors. Um, and that's definitely a, a huge part of what we do, but it's not all that we do. Um, we also, well, before this crisis, we had 32 senior dining sites where we offer a hot meal um, each day to over 2,000 seniors. And then we also have um, our Meals for Pets program where the, the seniors were feeding the food we were giving them to their pets. So we started to feed their pets um, and that's been going on for over 20 years. Um, it's a really amazing program. But we also, you know, we, we do a lot more than providing a meal. We, when we go into someone's home, our volunteers, they're the heart and soul of everything that we do. Uh, they get to know their clients really well and they provide a wellness check, a safety check, and kind of that connection to the community because a lot of times those volunteers are the only people those, those seniors see in any given week. So we really make sure to get them connected to other services that they need. Oh, that's great to hear. How has that changed the connection between your volunteers and the people they deliver meals to since COVID-19? Well, a, lot, a large number of our volunteers are actually older adults themselves, and a number of them, almost half, had self-isolated to protect themselves, but also to protect our clients. Um, so some of the volunteers have not been uh, involved since they self-quarantined, um, but we had a great partnership develop out of that with Cano Healthcare. Um, their drivers who used to drive all the older adults to the, their clinics obviously weren't doing that anymore. So they uh, had some time on their hands and they decided to volunteer for us. So we've got a whole fleet of volunteers to fill in for the volunteers that stayed home. Um, so, and we couldn't have done it without them. It's just amazing. How can someone um, volunteer with your organization since you mentioned you do utilize volunteers? Yeah, yeah. There's several ways. Um, we have a volunteer application on our website and our website is uh, mealsonwheelssouthflorida.org. And you go up into the little volunteer box and you can uh, apply online or you can call in. We really prefer the online way though. So it's easier to keep everything together. But if somebody wants to call in and apply over the phone, they can do that. And the call in number is 954-731. 8770. And there's a whole lot of volunteer opportunities. It's not just the home delivered meal part. Um, the Meals for Pets is once a month and it's on a Saturday. So folks that are working or want to just do something on a more limited basis, that's, that's an opportunity for them there too. And we're also doing telephone reassurance calls right now to call all of our clients and kind of check in, just let them know that we're thinking about them. And uh, volunteers are doing that as well. Oh, that is great to hear. Um, I wanted to know, also, how many meals is your program currently delivering? Um, to well, the a lot more than we used to. I could <laughs> uh, last week, we delivered 27,000 meals to 2,100 homes. Um, that's up from what pre-COVID, uh, we were at about 900 homes. 
and again, half the number of meals. So it just, over three weeks, it just skyrocketed. That's incredible. Um, and also, um, what is the application process? So if someone wanted to apply for uh, assistance from your program? That can also be done online or over the phone with the same website, except you go to apply for services and there's an application form. It's pretty short. Um, other somebody, if somebody doesn't know how to use the internet or the, a lot of our clients don't, um, they can have somebody else help them. Or again, they can call our main office at 954-731-8770 and we'll do that application over the phone. Okay. And um, what are the requirements to be eligible for? Uh, it's, that's an interesting question because prior, everything's like pre-COVID versus after COVID. <laughs> um, the requirements for the federally funded program, and that's um, through the Older Americans Act, through the Florida Department of Elder Affairs, down to the Agency on Aging, or Area Agency on Aging here, uh, they fund our federal program. Um, those requirements are you had to be 60 years or older and be homebound for a home delivered meal. That's, and then the congregate meals, when they start back up, um, anybody over the age of 60 can come in and get a free meal at those sites. Um, then we have other programs that are funded, especially now we've received so much generous funding from foundations and, and uh, like the Jewish Federation, and the Moran Foundation, um, to provide meals to folks who don't meet the federal guidelines. So we can, it's still focusing on older adults, um, but we have a little more flexibility with that. So what I would tell people is if they're interested, give, give us a call, we'll see what we can do. Um, we can serve people under the age of 60 with some of those other grants. And for people who are not eligible, are there other services available they can apply for food assistance in the community? Absolutely. Well, of course, everybody knows about um, EBT or SNAP benefits, food stamps. Uh, that has been changed now post-COVID. It's a lot easier to apply and you get a bigger bigger allocation on your, on your uh, EBT card. Um, but they don't qualify for that. Also, I mean, I'm sure you've seen in the news, there are distribution sites all over the place. And even some of the lines are getting shorter, um, but you can find every distribution site on the Children's Services Council's um, website at Together for Broward. That's together, the, the number four, Broward. Dot org and it shows you all the, the sites that are operational or that will be operational when they're open where they're at um, and there's also um, through the department of children and families they have a limited budget for home delivered meals mostly for people with disabilities um, so the dcf has a hotline as well i don't have that number right on me <laughs> i should have gotten that we could always update it later right and then for children, um, there are summer break spots, and those usually don't open until school is out. But since school has been out for quite a while, um, the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services and the USDA have allowed all of the break spot sponsors, like us, to open sites early. And you can find all the break spot sites on summerbreakspot.org, or you can Tet, that'll give you a map that will show you, you put in your zip code and it'll show you all the ones that are near you. And there's a lot of them. Um, or you can text food FL to 877-877 and it will show you the nearest five locations to your, where you're at. Um, Great. And also there's, there's a lot of people who have become a part of the food distribution industry who didn't before. I mean, churches, all, all the pantries that been stocked um, and a lot of other providers that normally didn't provide meals. For example, the Area Agency on Aging is providing meals directly out of their offices as well. So there's a lot of people around town that are, are doing food distribution. That's great to know. Um, so we, we know that you're getting a lot of requests for food assistance right now. So um, we wanted to know, is there a waiting list to get assistance from your program? There is a waiting list, but, but with all this other funding, uh, the waiting list is for the federally funded program. So the federal funds that they've been altered um, that, are, that apply to our, our meal delivery service, there's the Families First Act, which supplemented 
the Older Americans Act and is being used first. Um, and then the CARES Act comes next. So um, we're taking people off that waiting list very quickly. And we got support from um, the Sala Foundation to feed every single highest priority person on our waiting list. Um, so all the top priority, priority one is what we call them. Um, they're all getting meals now and we're putting them on that program as soon as they apply. Um, we Great. still have to keep track of the waiting list because some of the people who aren't so needy might not, might take a little longer to get a meal. Um, but prior to COVID, we had over 1,400 people on our waiting list. Wow. And of those 1,400, we are now serving over 700 from that waiting list. Incredible. Incredible. Um, also, one question for you. Um, what other programs as Meals on Wheels, you mentioned the youth program, what other um, programs as Meals, Meals on Wheels has coming up in the near future? Well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the, the new reality of COVID and with our congregate meal site. Um, we're talking to each site. Um, those are like the focal points and churches and the um, housing, uh, subsidized housing units for seniors. Mm -hmm. um, they're all kind of pacing themselves, figuring out how they're going to reopen. So that coming up, what, what a congregate meal site is going to look like in the future um, is going to be something that we're going to have to pay a lot of attention to. I think people are going to be hesitant to go back into a group setting um, and, and they're going to have to social distance. So some of these places are too small to do that. Um, but we have um, the summer is coming and with the summer break spot, uh, we've opened these grab and go, we're opening um, grab and go sites for kids to get a week's worth of breakfasts and dinners. And we're just rolling that out right now. Um, we intend on expanding that um, in the very few weeks to come and going live with everybody, all 52 sites from Kindle to the Palm Beach border um, as soon as uh, June 8th. So we got, we got a lot on our plate, but um, well, I guess we're just like everybody else too. You mentioned Kendall. Is your I thought your service there was just Broward. So do you guys extend all the way to um, Miami? With the summer program, yes, we we go all the way down to almost into Monroe County. Um, but our federal funding for the older adults meal program is only for Broward County right now. Um, and some of our other programs, like we're also. Uh, Medicaid managed long-term care meal provider. We can go into Miami with that program and Palm Beach, actually. That's good to know. And and those who are interested in applying for those programs, they can still go on your website. Absolutely. Part of what we do as the onboarding process for somebody who's applying for services is we go over all the different programs we have because we do have programs where there's no waiting list, and if somebody can afford fifty dollars a week, uh, we get, they get this exact same meals as the person on the federally funded program. So that's called our cost share program. And then we have a kind of gourmet level um, home delivered meal program called Complete Cuisine. And everybody can order their sides and their entrees and soups and salads, and all, all that stuff. And usually that, that's about $80 a week. It's a little, it's a little more expensive. But, um, I might have to sign up for that. <laughs> my staff do. We have it delivered here. <laughs> <laughs> I need that. <laughs> And uh, lastly, Mark, I know you and I are in a few committees together and organizations um, where we try to provide services to the community the best we can. Um, I know you were heavily involved with the um, 2020 census, and I wanted to uh, get an update from you on what's going on with the 2020 census. Yeah, well, thanks for that. Um, it has been a gargantuan uh, collaborative effort across Broward County with the Complete Count Committee that's headed by Commissioner Nan Rich. Um, she got together some of the major ball players and or major, major players in the community to head subcommittees. We've been at it. I mean, there's six subcommittees and there's at least 20 people on every subcommittee. Um, and we've all been working throughout this crisis, um, kind of pivoting on how we're gonna reach people because we had originally intended on doing face-to-face educational sessions are helping people complete the census face-to-face -face in the libraries and the senior centers. That can't happen now. So um, 
Mm -hmm. It's definitely going full steam ahead. They did close the offices, the census offices for a couple months during all of this. They reopened last week on a limited capacity, but um, everybody's gone digital, um, which for, for a lot of people it works, but for, not for some people that don't have access to the internet. So we're, we're um, looking at the, the response rates right now. Broward County has right now, as of the 11th of this month, they have a 54.5% response rate to the, cert, to the census mm -hmm. and different cities vary. I mean, the lowest response rate is in Pembroke Park and that's 30.1% mm -hmm. and the highest response rate is Cooper City and that's 75.5%. So we are going and targeting those lower response areas literally on the ground and um, seeing who works with those eight, those folks who, you know, the, who serves those populations and targeting our, our outreach efforts there. And you've probably seen and heard a lot of PSAs going on lately on TV and on the radio. So that's kind of a strategy to blanket the whole area. And then we're gonna pinpoint those low response rate, rate areas with specific strategies. Um, they pushed all of the dates back for completing the census. Um, they were gonna try and wrap it all up by June, end of June, July. Now it's been pushed back to October um, because they know it's gonna take a little longer to get everybody to respond. But one of the reasons it's so important is we see it now in this pandemic, the census drives all the funding for hospitals, healthcare, planning for the future, emergency response. And we can see the impact of not having that funding and that's the census. The census is what gets all of those dollars driven to where they need to go. So we're working full steam ahead. Big job. Yes, big job. Thank you for taking that on. We appreciate it. Um, thank you, Mark, um, for joining us this afternoon. Um, I just want to remind everyone who's watching us right now that next week we'll be back on Tuesday, um, May 19th at 5 p.m. for our virtual clinic um, for caregivers. We're going to share some tips for caregivers and provide some um, information, legal information that they need to know and resources that are available in the community for caregivers who are providing care for um, their loved ones, their elderly um, in the community. And also, I just want to remind everyone, please join us next Friday at 4 p.m. for another um, episode of Fridays with Friends. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Katya. Thank you. Bye.